Blessed Sunday, brothers and sisters. Welcome to the 8 o'clock service of Word for the World Christian Fellowship. Um, if you have any prayer requests, uh, answer prayers, please share it with us in the chat box. We will pray with you and rejoice with you with your answered prayers. And uh, we all welcome you this morning. Thank you for joining us. And we are blessed that you are all here. Um, today, this Sunday, is a very special Sunday. We will be presenting to you our Christmas presentation. It is special because, number one, of course, we will be remembering our Lord Jesus Christ. Number two, uh, we will be hearing messages of what... Uh, uh, the Lord, uh, the Lord's birth has uh, given you and me. And the third, actually, brothers and sisters, is you will be hearing songs rendered by our LCs, our life circles. Yes, our life circles. So um, continue to prepare your hearts, prepare your minds, and let us uh, focus our eyes on the Lord Jesus Christ as we listen to the season of hope.
In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary? asked the angel, since I'm a virgin. The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month, for no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. See, the Gospel of Luke records the angel Gabriel visiting Mary and saying to her that she would give birth to a son who would be the Savior as prophesied by many prophets in the Old Testament. Mary was unsure how could this happen since she was a virgin. But when Gabriel told her that the child would be conceived by the Holy Spirit, her response was to accept it wholeheartedly. She said, I am the Lord's servant. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. Mary responded with belief and willingness to submit to God's plan. This shows her faith in God. We too should have such faith and a willing heart to trust and follow God in obedience and in devotion. Mary, the mother of Jesus, was described by God as highly favored. This phrase essentially means much grace. Mary received God's grace in this grand plan of God on the basis of God's sovereign will and purpose. It is because of God's grace that this plan for humanity, created from the very beginning, will now be fulfilled through the birth of Jesus, the Son of God, and subsequently his completed work on the cross. Thus, the Virgin Mary, by God's grace, recognized that she needed a Savior. God used Mary in an extraordinary way to the virgin birth of Jesus, the Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed One. Yes, Mary was favored by God, but at the same time, Mary, like all of us, was a sinner too who needed Jesus Christ as her Savior in the same manner as everyone else in this world, including you and I, would need. In fact, in the song that she sang to God as a result of all these events happening on earth in her life, Mary declared, My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. And the events of Christmas, Jesus' birth, His succeeding life, His ministry, and resurrection, bring us hope in this troubled, broken, and suffering world. The hope of salvation through the forgiveness of our sins that comes from Jesus Christ alone permeates the story of Christmas, reminding us year after year and even every moment of the hope that we have in Him through His wonderful grace. This hope is not wishful thinking like the hope that comes from the world, but the hope that is eternally assured because of God's faithfulness. Moreover, as prophesied by the prophet Isaiah, the child will be called Emmanuel, which means God is with us. This is another truth in the message of Christmas. The coming of Jesus Christ to the world ushers in the time that God is literally with us. Even today, God remains to be in us through the work of the Holy Spirit who dwells upon us, those who put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ. That's the hope that we have, and we should embrace it fully every single day of our life. Today, in this season of life, we are facing so much troubles and challenges. Loneliness, physical losses, financial burden, emotional and mental distress continue to linger in our midst. But we have hope. No? We have all the reason to be thankful for because in Christ, we certainly have hope. 
hope to press on, hope to endure, hope for comfort and peace, hope to see God's promises fulfilled. That is our hope that rests only in Christ, our living and wonderful God. Praise, glory, and honor belong to Him alone. Hallelujah. Good morning. A man from the tribe of Judah named Joseph is going to be married to a woman named Mary. But before they came together, the woman was found to be with a child. Mary was pregnant. And so Joseph, being a righteous man, wanted to break the engagement quietly because he did not want to disgrace Mary. So when he had considered to do all of this, an angel of the Lord came to Joseph in a dream. And he, the angel of the Lord says this to Joseph. Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. For the child who has been conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son and you shall call his name Jesus for he will save his people from their sins. Joseph woke up from his sleep and did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him to do. He took Mary as his wife. Little did Joseph know that this child that he will be a father to is the fulfillment to all messianic prophecies of the Old Testament. One prophecy in Isaiah which can be found in chapter 9, verse 6, says this, For to us a child is born, a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. What a glorious prophecy! And now being fulfilled in this couple, Joseph and Mary. This is Jesus that we are talking about, 
our Prince of Peace. In Jesus, we find comfort and peace. In Jesus, our hearts are at rest. In times of trouble and difficulty, we hold on to Jesus, for in Him lies all the promises now and the promises that are to come. He promises, he promises us the forgiveness of our sins if we come to Him. In Him, He says, we will have life and life that is abundant. That if we seek His kingdom first, the rest will be taken care of for us. That those who come to Him will never hunger and thirst. That if we come to Him, He will give us rest. And if we submit to His Lordship, His Holy Spirit will lead us, will counsel us, and guide us every step of the way. Jesus is the only solution to all our problems. And having Jesus is indeed having peace in our hearts. And upon His return, He will rule upon His people and there will be peace all throughout the whole world, our Prince of Peace. He is our wonderful Counselor, our mighty God, our Eternal Father, our Prince of Peace. Hallelujah and glory to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Merry Christmas to all of you.
Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let heaven and nature sing. Those are the first and last lines of perhaps the most famous Christmas song in history. But why is there joy to the world? Who is this Lord who has come? Why does heaven and nature sing to Him? Why do we celebrate Christmas with so much joy and gladness in our hearts? You see, Scripture proclaims that we are all sinners. In Psalm 14, 2 and 3, it says, The Lord looks down from heaven on all mankind to see if there are any who understand, any who seek God. But what did God see? All have turned away, all have become corrupt. There is no one who does good, not even one. The Apostle Paul reminded the Roman believers that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. All the peoples of the earth have fallen short. The men and the women, children and adults, rich and the poor. No one is exempted. All the peoples of the earth need a Savior. This good news of the coming of the Savior of the world was finally fulfilled that one silent night. In Luke 2 verse 8, it records that there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. Then an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. Notice two things in these verses. One, the angel of the Lord did not announce the good news of the coming of the Lord, the Messiah, in courts or palaces and kingdoms, but to simple, unassuming shepherds. This good news is for everyone, from the greatest to the lowliest of men, from the richest to the poorest of people. God gave earth her Savior in our Lord Jesus Christ. Number two, the shepherds were initially terrified. Like all of the angel appearances in the past, these shepherds were terrified, and indeed they ought to be, as the glory of the Lord shone on them. This meant their sinfulness were fully exposed in the glorious presence of God's holiness. They must have thought, but the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. Why? Because the angel announced the good news that will bring great joy for all people. That day, the prophecy about the Messiah, the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, have finally come to pass. And as the angel had said, the shepherds found the baby Jesus, wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. This is a picture of utmost humility from a heavenly king. Glory, hallelujah. And that glorious scene ended with an even greater glory for the creator of the heavens and the earth. It says, Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom His favor rests. As Christians, we burst out into inexpressible joy because we have received God's favor, chosen to be part of His heavenly family. Indeed, we give God the highest glory because we have been purchased by the precious blood of Jesus Christ, saved from heaven's judgment and wrath, and now enjoy peace with God. Glory to God in the highest. Hallelujah!
chapter 4 verse 7 to 9 first John chapter 4 verse 7 to 9 dear friends let us love one another for love comes from God everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God whoever does not have does not love does not know God because God is love amen verse 9 this is how God showed his love among us he sent His one and only Son into the world that you, that we might live through Him. Hallelujah. God sent His only Son for us 
that we may live through Him because there was no other source of life but only through the Lord Jesus Christ. And that was brought to, uh, to us with, by God's love by sending His only Son. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, everyone can love, brothers and sisters. A- anyone can, 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 can say that, uh, you know, even non-believers, they can say that we, we love. I can love. I love. I love him. I love this. I love that. Yes, but you see, we have to understand the kind of love that the Lord is speaking here to you and me today. It's the kind of love that is similar to his kind of love. And what is that? That love, we can go out and love our enemies, love the unlovables, love God even despite the fact that we are in the depths of our troubles and problems. That is the kind of love. You see? The, the, the world does not understand, and brothers and sisters, the world does not understand the, the, the meaning of love. Because they can love those lovable people, lovable things, lovable situations. Yes, we will love. I can love. But you see, to love your your enemies, those unlovables, is the kind of love that God wants you and I to declare to this world. Now, there are three reasons why you and I should love. First is that love is from God. In in, in verse uh, 8 and the latter part of verse 8 it says for God is love so definitely if God is love then love is from God you cannot take that away you cannot separate that because it is just like with fire with fire there is heat right you cannot take that out with with the the sun comes light no matter where you go when there is the sun shining there will be light and that goes the same with love love brothers and sisters is from God Because God is love. That is His character. That is who He is. You cannot take that away from God. If you take away love from God, brothers and sisters, I do not know how you can call that. Because that is Him. That is His character. That is who He is. He is a loving God. That is why He has sent His only, one and only Son for you and me. Second, love is the evidence that we are born of God. You and I are born of God. Why? Because remember, love is a consequence. Okay? Love is uh, a consequence of accepting the Lord Jesus Christ. It is not a precondition to be born again. Uh, For you to be born again, you have to know love. No. It is a consequence that happens when you and I accept the Lord Jesus Christ because when you accept the Lord Jesus Christ brothers and sisters love comes out naturally those unlovable those uh, enemies that we have even our frenemies uh, we can love them right okay the third love demonstrates that you know God when you have love we demonstrate God. We show God by our love. The world will know that you and I belong to the Lord Jesus Christ because they see the love of God through us flowing to them. Brothers and sisters, this season of hope, this time, this Christmas time, probably we can go sit down and reflect again. 11 months ago, how God has blessed us, how God has been good to us, how God has been favoring you and me, how God has just been moving in our lives. Brothers and sisters, it's about time we focus on God's love. Let us be serious with God's love. This season of hope, may the love of God be upon each and every one of us. Let us pray. Father, we just thank you. For truly in you, we have hope, oh God. Father, in, 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 your, in your words that we read every day, we have joy, we have peace, Lord. Father, in your presence, we know that there is love and we feel your love, oh God. Father, we just 
praise you today. Make that love alive in our hearts today. That Father, as we show this world, as we demonstrate you to this world, Lord God, let your love fill us. That Father, we will take your love to the world. Thank you, O God, for this season of hope. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen.